I'm Hank Stewart, the host of Young ATL, a show that profiles influential creators in the Atlanta area. Today I have with me Ms. Shayla Nostel, a recent graduate of Woodward Academy. Man, a young leader. How are you doing, Shaylin? I'm fantastic. I'm just <laughs> letting it are. all like wash over me that I know you are. High school's in the past and next up wow, is college. Wow, high school's in the past. Yes, now. yes. <laughs> what was that like? I was at the graduate. Tell me tell me about graduation. Tell me Graduation about day was a blur. <laughs> like literally it was 94 degrees. Mm -hmm. So everyone was like, we're ready in to have morning. this be over with, but also like it was bittersweet because it's like, oh, wow, like when it's over, it's like really over. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was super exciting. It was so like great to have family, friends, you, Miss Gwen there to celebrate with me. Like such a great so, day. So Woodward Academy. So what's next? What's next is NYU, New mm -hmm. York University. I'll be class of 2022 mm -hmm. and I'll be studying a major in politics with a minor in social and cultural analysis. That is awesome. Okay, so let's go back. So you're a leader, you're, you're a leader, you're an amazing young lady. Um, one of the things that um, I started, I wanted to make sure that we talked about, let's go back before we get to Woodward Academy. You had the, the luxury last year to study abroad you studied in Germany. You did yes. your you did your junior year in Germany. T let's talk about that. How how did that come about? And let's talk about that as well. The way I decided that's something I wanted to do was every year at my school we would have these assemblies where representatives would come in and try to like convince us to do a year abroad through mm -hmm. a program that was separate from how I actually ended up in Germany. And I was like, oh my gosh, this sounds so cool. This is so awesome. And about three assemblies in, so three years later, I was just like. I really do want to do something like this. It sounds amazing. It's an opportunity to really get immersed into like a new culture. And I just went home one day and I was like, oh, mom, like, by the way, I don't want to go to Woodward next year. I'd like to go to Germany. She's like, okay, Shailen, like, cool. It's like another thing that's just saying something to do. But eventually, like, I just didn't let it go. I was like, no, I really want to go and experience like Europe and travel and see something different. I, I didn't see why not. Like, mm. There was a lot of reasons to stay home, but I was like, why stay comfortable? Like, I need to press myself now so in the future when there's opportunities that arise that require me to travel or interact with new You're people. I'm not intimidated by I'm it. I'm not intimidated, mm -hmm. right. And I was like, there's no better, I saw no better time to do that. Mm -hmm. And I had, you know, friends and family try to convince me otherwise and be like, oh, you can do it in college or in your late 20s. And I was like, no, like, this is... Okay. This is the time for that. So, so take me back, okay? So I, I remember because I, I was a part of the process. So, but take me back to getting off the plane in Germany. Take walk it us was through that. Crazy. Not even <laughs> from getting off the plane. You went with, nobody was with you. My dad went with me to, there to, okay. just because I needed help, like transporting luggage okay. and okay. things of that nature. But he was only there for like four or five days, and after that, I was just there with my host family. Okay. But it got real after our we had a layover. And um, I think we're in Frankfurt. Okay. And that's when I really was starting to like hear German like mm. fluently and like, oh, it was like language is not, it's not something I fully understood at that point, even though I had been taking German classes for two years before that. I was like, oh, this is like, these are real Germans. So, like this is okay, real okay, life. Okay. Now this is really fascinating. So why Germany? Cause then you, it was, I'm sure that with other choices, why did you, how did you choose Germany? Well, since I had been taking German okay. since freshman year, I, I was like, there's no better place to go. Like if I really want to, practice what I've been learning in terms of my foreign language studies. And the reason why I chose German in the beginning, freshman year, I was like, I just wanted to do something different. I felt like everybody was taking Spanish, everybody was taking French, and there was no like African-Americans taking German. I was mm. like, so why not, you know? Mm. So you get to your host family, tell us about them. What was that relationship like? Complex. Was it, wow. Yeah, it was very complex. Okay, they were, elaborate, um, what do you mean complex? We, they, we just had, difference of opinions mm -hmm. oftentimes. They thought of family life to be one way and that way being the only way and then like other ways were just like not a proper home life. So, you know, my parents are divorced, but I'm very cool with both of them. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm cool and functioning, but they weren't convinced that I came from a proper background mm -hmm. because of that. Mm -hmm. So that often caused us to have difference of ideas and opinions and thoughts, not just in relation to like living in a single parent household, but just like, oh, do your parents spend time with you? Mm. Or this is like, yeah, I'm cool. Like I'm chilling. Mm. <laughs> Thank you though. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 
So um, school, what was school like in Germany? What I was... loved my school in okay. Germany. Okay. I went to Dresden International School. And what was perfect about that school is because even though most of my peers were Germans, mm -hmm. uh, the language for everybody was English. Oh. So that's part of the reason why my German actually ended up not being so great mm -hmm. when I left Germany because most of my time you know, in school was spent speaking English with my peers who were either German or we had some Russian so they were kids. More bi they were more bilingual than, than Oh, the, absolutely. Than, wow. Yeah. And I mean, there were still times that they would speak German amongst each other, but I just felt super comfortable because all my peers and teachers and everybody like spoke English. I was mm -hmm. taught in English. And it made the transition from, you know, Woodward to DIS just way more like breathable, mm -hmm. I should say. Mm -hmm. So how would you compare the two um educationals, uh, the, the, how would you compare the learning the, the, and, and what mm -hmm. you've learned with, with regular prop, you know, regular schooling and now international? I understand now from firsthand experience why the United States is behind mm. in terms of education, okay. in terms of math, science, English, reading, why, literature. Why do you think, I why get it. Why are we behind? Because the amount of time that is applied school and how long was class how was our system is super flawed in okay. like every aspect okay. when it comes to time applied at school okay. homework assigned teachers class sizes and this not only what was the class sizes there it differed for okay. subject my okay. math class only had three students including wow. myself so the teacher had more uh, of an opportunity to apply exactly okay. and to go at a pace where it suited all three of us versus a class of 20 or 25 mm. Um, most of my classes did not exceed 15 or 18 students. Wow. 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 Yeah. And your GPA came up when you were over in Germany, am Definitely. I correct? And that was my first year taking any type of advanced or honors classes, mm -hmm. which in the beginning was kind of hard to get acclimated to because their honors classes were like an AP here. Mm -hmm. And so for me, even the standard classes felt like honors, but I like quickly adjusted. And of course, with the help of like some amazing teachers, I was able to find my rhythm and I excelled in both the standard and higher level courses. Now, now I think you're exceptional. I mean, I've always, I've never thought you were to be average. Thank you. But, I, 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 but it, you just said something that proves that if uh, most of our students can acclimate if given the opportunity. Am, am I correct? Of course. It's all about effort. And exposure. On both parties. Mm -hmm. And it's about effort of parents, effort of teachers, and effort of students. And I think where we are flawed here in the States is that we've written off students who have an alternative way of learning. Mm. Of course, we're so used to like, you know, those little mm -hmm. quizzes and tests, mm -hmm. like, are you a visual or mm -hmm. physical learner? But I don't mean in terms of like those little categories, because there's so many different ways to obtain information. Mm -hmm. I personally learned through being in Europe, I can't, I'm, the eight hour school day doesn't work for me. Okay in the sense where I can be understanding the information and it can be a class I enjoy, but just the physical act of being in school for eight hours straight, mm -hmm. at some point, I'm not you really, checked I'm you, checked out. You've checked yeah, out. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go, I'm ready mm -hmm. to do something else. Mm -hmm. In Germany at my school, some days we would be assigned to have a course for an hour, we'd be 20 minutes in, lectures over, the teacher's assigned, you know, whatever assignment it is, and he's like, okay, day's over, go home. And that extra hour, two hours or three hours that I would sometimes be granted could be spent studying, studying mm -hmm. or learning somewhere else or, you know, going to the park and mm -hmm. studying or mm -hmm. really diversifying my learning environment. And just the change of environment is something that I realized that I needed, that I was never granted that look into here in the States. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I was super lucky to be able to go to, you know, Woodward and go to other private schools. And if I'm still feeling like I was shortchanged, then I can only imagine how other youth okay. feel. So, okay, so let's let's come back to the states now. After this year abroad, right? Um, and now you're back at Woodward. Mm -hmm. Tell us how you reacclimated yourself to, to that environment. And, and did you look at school a whole different way now? It's, bring, yeah. us to, bring us up to speed on that. It was easier. Okay. Like, it just felt better. I felt one thing that I definitely was able to get during my time in Germany is I reclaimed my confidence in mm -hmm. myself in terms of academics. For a very long time, I didn't feel very sure of myself. I felt like 
very down because I wasn't strong in certain subjects. Mm -hmm. And my time in Germany really helped me reclaim like my assurance in myself in terms of what I can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. And what I learned and in terms of school, like there really isn't anything I can't do. I just have to go around things a different way. Mm -hmm. And so when I got back to Woodward, everything just fell into place very naturally mm -hmm. because after dealing with a school at such a high level, high rigor in Germany, and to go back to like a, like a lower pace, mm -hmm. if you will, it, it just was, and easier. That's interesting because Woodward is one of our better schools. You with me? So mm -hmm. we, it's, you know, so comparing that to just regular public school and understanding. So, you know, I, 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 there's so much is going through my head because um, um, when you came back to Woodward, I remember in September of this past year, the Stewart Foundation. You've been the president of the Stewart Foundation. Yeah. We had an opportunity to uh, interact at the Miss Black College Hall of Fame. And you were put on the spot, and I think that was one of my shining moments. You had an opportunity to sit on the panel with um, all the other queens around HBCUs. What was that like for you? That was so much fun. Okay. Honestly, like I can't describe it any other way because we were just, you know, eating at the tables in the audience, and I was excited to be able to like witness the panel. I was mm -hmm. so excited to see what some of the kings and queens had to say, and then. Somebody's like, oh, like, we need someone else to get up there. Do you want to? And I'm just like, okay. Like. Mm, and you stole the show. And you stole the show. Um, so, and, and, I, and I'm asking that question. I'm asking that question because of preparation. You were prepared to do that. And, and talk about being prepared because there was no prep the night before that you might even possibly be on this right. panel. You know, so talk about young people and being prepared and, and, and not missing those opportunities. You didn't miss the opportunity in Germany. You didn't miss the opportunity and miss HBCU. And there's a whole lot of the opportunities that you jumped on. And I think so many of our young people miss the opportunity because they're not prepared, they're not ready. One thing I've been putting into practice more and more as I've gotten older is learning certain people who are in your life that have your best interests at heart, mm -hmm. identify those people and never say no to them. Mm -hmm. And it's as simple as that. Never say no to them. Now it's gotta be the key people. So like mm -hmm. your peers, your homies, mm -hmm. maybe not in that sense, mm -hmm. but- But people you know mean you the best, mean the best for Definitely you. people who you know have the best intentions for you. Know who those people are and just don't ever say no to them. What, if you had to, and, and we're gonna take a break shortly, but if you had to sum up one key attribute to leadership, what, what, would, it, what would it be to being a good leader? Honestly, I feel like being a leader is the ability to see how to course correct someone, but having the discretion to scale back mm -hmm. and allow them to have that pitfall or allow them to make that mistake so that they can be a better leader. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like it's hard as a leader, sometimes you want to help and fix and do everything, but in order to build up better leaders and to you know, allow people to create their own leading style, you mm -hmm. have to sometimes sit back and like, let someone make a mistake or let someone have a like a little trip up. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, uh, failing, you learn more from failing than you ever learn from succeeding sometimes, you know. Most definitely. There, there's a quote that says, if you call yourself a leader and you look back and no one is following you, you're simply taking a walk. But well, we know that you're a leader, Shaylin, because a lot of people are following you. We're going to take a break and we're going to come right back and we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the things that you're involved in. We are back with Woodward Academy graduate, Shailen Estelle. How's that sound? I love it. <laughs> I want it on business cards. I, I want it on a t-shirt. I, I love it. I know it. it. <laughs> Those 12 years went by though, didn't they? They yeah. flew by. We were, you know, we were talking, I was talking once, time waits for nobody, man. Did those 12 years seem like they flew by to you? Definitely the last two okay. were super quick. Mm -hmm. Before that, everything felt <laughs> slow. It was very but I think for me is when I came back from Germany mm -hmm. and then everything like really was like it go time. Off. And it then Germany off. felt quick, okay. kind of. So. And you know the rest of your life is gonna go even faster now. You know, um, yeah. so now we're gonna go to NYU and you're gonna major in? Politics. Right, so yeah. what, where, did, where did this love come from and wanting to be a political analyst? 
I've always been a, like an avid CNN watcher, okay. even when I was really young, to the point where my mom was like, please turn that off. We're not going to watch like violence in Syria right now. Like, mm. stop. And I just really was interested in it. And finally, in eighth grade, I had a class where our history teacher would challenge us to write like little fake blog posts about current events and mm -hmm. politics and like happenings. And that was my favorite thing to do. Like, I loved it. And finally, I realized as I like did more research, I was like, I can get paid to do this. Mm. So it became like a reality where like this little fake mock assignment was actually a way real people were like making money and making an impact and making a difference in their communities. <laughs> And I was like, that's what I want to do. Mm. And that's literally, like, thanks, so Mr. Sorrow in eighth grade. For who, are some your, who are some of your favorite um, analysts right now? Who are some of your favorite political Some analysts? of my favorite political presences, because mm -hmm. it's a whole spectrum mm -hmm. of people. Love Van Jones. Mm -hmm. Van, is a good Van Jones is, like, my, like, I look up to Van mm -hmm. Jones. Angela Rye. Oh, yeah. She's, she's sharp. Simone Sanders mm -hmm. is amazing. I love Simone Sanders. And honestly, Don Lemon, past mm -hmm. two years, Don mm -hmm. Lemon. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I get it. I feel like Don's had like a shift in narrative mm -hmm. and like the way he carries himself, and mm -hmm. I'm super here for it. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like I like the like how he's proven that as a reporter, and he's been in the game for a really long time. He can mm -hmm. still be like redeemable. Mm -hmm. So I think that's inspiring as well. Have you had the um, opportunity to meet any of your any of them? No. So we need to make no, that happen. That needs to be happen. So what's the what's the course of action? So you go through NYU, and let's let me let me back up and just say this: you were want a early admissions. You were able early to, decision, early yeah. Decision, and that was the number was pretty high of applicants. We don't know the exact number, but it was thousands. And so you to be chosen, um, what nineteen in the nineteen percent? Nineteen percent. This was a super tight year for NYU. It was the top applied to private university. And I applied early decision before I even knew how tight competition was. And you had any other choice? You didn't. You didn't apply to anybody didn't else. Didn't apply to any other school. Yeah. Wow. You just. You just knew. You just. That was it. Why? Why NYU? Honestly, it's the perfect mix of big city, mm -hmm. big college, and their professors really like walk the talk and talk mm -hmm. the walk. Mm -hmm. Like they are in their field. They have experience in and out the classroom. And it speaks for itself mm -hmm. with the alum that comes out of NYU. Like, I just really love their results mm -hmm. of the type of people that come out of that school. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, yeah, that combination of all of that. Also, it's a major hub for media, media mm -hmm. like a lot of what mm -hmm. I want to get into. Mm -hmm. and I just I did not see any other school fulfilling like my requirements for something like you know, that. I always say that about New Yorkers. You know, we can talk about the rudeness or whatever you want to call talk about in, in, in you know, the, the New Yorkers, but one of the things that they have access to so much, and I always say the young people in New York are so much smarter because they live in the middle, that they are reared mm -hmm. in the middle of media, finance, you know, all of these different cultures, you know, and learning and, and learning folk and all that. So who would you want to work for when you come out? Who are you going to work for when you come out of NYU? When I come out of NYU, I actually want to lay low a little bit. Okay. I think I see myself for the two years after I graduate. One, trying to see what I want to do for grad school. Okay. And two, working for a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. I want to really focus on families, helping families of those who have incarcerated loved ones, mm -hmm. some of which are incarcerated justly and some not so much and I really want to get into how we can improve our criminal justice mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. that's thing number one so I want to lay low and really get my hands on in that community help mm -hmm. the people who are directly affected with those situations and then after that I would like to go to Columbia for grad school okay. and after I do that I would love 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 to work for CNN mm -hmm. But you think or about MSNBC. For political, you want to run for a political office at some point, right? At some point, that's like 40s. When okay. I'm done. Oh, don't <laughs> say it like that's old, do you? The, what now? <laughs> how, how, when? Late 40s. <laughs> yeah. Late 40s. When I'm done traveling okay. and really being in the community, because I feel like I, I don't want to be seen as much mm -hmm. in my early. I want mm -hmm. my work to be seen, but mm -hmm. I don't want mm -hmm. to be seen. Okay, let's let's stay there for just a minute. And I think so many young people don't understand that. The, and, and, and this is I'm going to lean into my next question with you. 
But so many young people don't understand uh, your digital footprint. Mm. You know, what you put on social media and how you live and all the things that you're saying. Tell, what would you tell your younger self about some things that you, and you know, because you're 18 now and, uh, and you're graduating. What would you tell yourself at 14 that you would have done differently? Not even in regards to social media, because I've always been, like, wary. Okay. But in terms of, like, people pleasing, mm -hmm. I would just tell myself, J just do you. Mm -hmm. Just wait it out. Because some, everybody peaks at their own mm -hmm. pace. Mm -hmm. And I would just really encourage myself to fight the good fight and just stay patient. Because I used to just get really upset that I wasn't able to achieve what so-and-so was doing or travel to where such and such was going. And I just really would be down on myself because of my differences. But like what I know now, it's like those differences that have been able to make me the individual I am today. Mm -hmm. So definitely it would be a, a, a strong talk about just, just wait it out. Mm -hmm. Just wait and see what happens. Now you know mentorship <laughs> to us is very important to me. Um, I just, I just think mentorship is the key. Um, let first talk about your your parents mm -hmm. and the impact that they had on you. And I know both your parents, so they're amazing people. And then talk about mentorship and what that means and what that looks like to you. I've been very blessed to have parents that are like dualities. Mm -hmm. So I've been able to possess both of their strong traits. My dad is very driven. I've seen him run hard bargains with many things. And he's taught me that when you want something, you go for it. Mm -hmm. You be driven, you're persistent. And I really appreciate the way he goes about himself in terms of being a businessman, where he doesn't let the stereotypes that plague the black community mm -hmm. affect how he conducts mm -hmm. his business. Mm -hmm. He's not sitting around like, oh, I'm gonna be more quiet because I don't want to be an aggressive black male. Like, mm -hmm. he, gets it done in a way where he knows it needs to get done. And I really appreciate having that example mm -hmm. in my father because I'm like, yeah, I need to not be afraid of speaking out in spaces or having my voice be mm -hmm. heard in a respectable manner, but also you have to like, in a way sometimes show people why you deserve mm -hmm. to be respected. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that cannot be achieved by remaining silent. Mm -hmm. My mom mm -hmm. is super gracious mm -hmm. and humble, mm -hmm. the most humble person I know. Mm -hmm. My mom has done so much in the community and contributed to so many projects. Mm -hmm. And I don't think unless you know her that mm -hmm. you wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. And she's definitely with the person. Who does it with excellence. And perfectionism, mm -hmm. perfectionism. it's flawless. Mm -hmm. And she's definitely the person that has inspired me to one, put my best foot forward in everything that I do. And two, she's the one that has like reassured me in my decision to want to remain more, I wanna be a presence in the community, but I don't need to be a big face mm -hmm. or fame or popularity. Like I just want the work mm -hmm. to speak for itself. The work my mom has done in the school systems and mentoring and mm -hmm. tutoring, mm -hmm. it's there. And it's there without everyone having to know it was June Estelle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in that same way, I want to be that type of person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So your other mentors, uh, mentor, and, I, and, 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 and you know, you and I kid off, off record about it, but I want you to talk about your mentors because I, I think it's so important. I think so many young people think that they have to do it by themselves mm -hmm. and, and they're trying to do it or they're leaning on people who are not the best mentors for them. Talk, but talk about yours. Well, one of my mentors is Miss Gwen Mason mm -hmm. who like my mom, does everything with class mm -hmm. and excellence. And so to have two black women in my life who execute in that same style and same mm -hmm. manner has really been a great example for me, especially since I've been seeing both of them work in their own fields and on their own projects since I was like super young. Mm -hmm. But Ms. Gwen also inspires me because she's someone who no matter what she's doing, she's always available. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's an important thing to take with me when I am you know, physically in another state or moving around or busy on projects. I don't ever want to reach a point where the community can't reach me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like her, she like really has made an, like an impression on me in that sense where I'm like, yeah, I need to make sure I remember that and always keep home close and keep the community close and 
like keep it humble, you know? And you know what, I, I'm, I'm also, your two mentors, your mom and your mentor, and then you have a lot, of, and I know a lot of the women around you, you got some pretty strong, your grandmothers, you know, I've, I've met both of them, mm -hmm. you got some pretty strong women around you, but your two mentors, your mom and, and Ms. Mason, both went through life changing, um, situations and they still they hit the ground you yeah. know they didn't they didn't let grass grow under their feet they you know they they their boots on the ground after going through some traumatic changes and so you saw their strength what about their strength I mean that motivation that really just because you're right it was life changing circumstances mm -hmm. both of them uh, battled with cancer seeing but how both of them never had a like woe is me mm -hmm. or this self-pity was amazing mm -hmm. because I've gotten like that over situations that are l like far less mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. important and that really taught me to have an attitude adjustment for mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. for multiple things two to be just appreciative mm -hmm. and three it just showed me like it just demonstrated their pure strength Okay. My mom was like done with mm -hmm. chemo at mm -hmm. one point and the very next week was on the computer doing mm -hmm. something for like a volunteer listing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing, mm -hmm. you know? Our time is running. We got, we got like three minutes and I wanted to touch on voting. Mm -hmm. um, real quick, talk about voting, what's important. Uh, you know, we're in a, an election cycle right now. Talk about that real quick. I know that's real important yes. to you. Voting is super important, but more important more important than voting is actually getting to know the candidate. Mm -hmm. If you're not able to do that on a personal level and interact with them one-on-one, -on -one, definitely look into their platforms, what mm -hmm. they stand for, their history of voting on certain bills and how that affects you because everything comes back to your individual household mm -hmm. and to you. Everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. don't, don't fall for a, like, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Mm -hmm. Don't. It's so important. Shailen, it's so I had a candidate to tell me once, and I and I can't say enough about what you just said. I had a candidate to tell me and say, our voting records is not always who we are. Your voting records is exactly who you are. This time with you, it went by so fast. Man, we could sit up and talk. There's so many things we need to talk about, and maybe we're going to have you back on this show. I know probably after your first year, maybe we'll come and talk about what NYU was about. Well, thank you so much, Shailen, for thank taking you. time out of your busy schedule. Yeah. It means the world to me. We, we, a seed has been planted in you, and we're expecting a harvest. We're expecting a harvest. Hello, my name is Hank Stewart. We're looking forward to seeing you again on Young ATL. Have a great day, and we look forward to talking to you soon. Have a great day.